Well, 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 looks like we're making a bit of progress. Hey everybody, so we've got an incredible show for you today. I'll have to start by giving you a bit of context. Not long ago, I had stumbled across someone here on the YouTubes by the name of Mr. Daryl Wildberg, claiming to be a Jehovah's Witness in good standing. But at the time, I was unaware of how to contact him as his comments were all turned off. So I made a little thing inviting him on my channel for an interview. Then someone forwarded me his email, so I passed the invite on to him personally. That video will be linked below in the description and in the end screen, by the way. And since then, we've had some exchanges too. You know, and I, and I have a habit of putting a, my foot in my mouth, you know, I got this problem where I say stupid things and, and, and it's got his back up now and we've been kind of trying to work that out. It all started, I guess I recommended that he should, uh, he should have a jingle on his channel, you know, before his videos. I thought that was a great idea. He disagreed with that. I also said something idiotic about him having a white suit when it was really gray. Uh, you know, said he had four suits and when he really had seven <laughs> for each day of the week. And as things progressed, you know, there were words. He said, I was a homosexual apostate, a moron, a tramp, and from my daddy, Satan, or something along those lines. And, and I'm sure he has his reasons. I mean, Daryl's a pretty smart guy. I, I've learned to trust his razor-sharp judgment on these things. Anyway, as a matter of course, I tried to figure out what I said, which got him so cross with me, you know, and, and, and it's been a long road, like it's been a few weeks. We've really, really been trying to work out our differences in the spirit of our exemplar, Jesus Christ. But you know what? I, I think we're making some headway, guys. He's still not comfortable with me luring him into my lair, as he would put it, for an interview where I have all the autonomy. But he did very graciously buy me a first-class ticket to his home where I could host his show for the week. This is just supposed to be a test of my character, you know, to see if I'm capable of emulating his perfectly objective and fair posture toward our differences of opinion. So Daryl, I really want to thank you for giving me the opportunity and, and flying me in such great style to where you live. I'll try to do better than I had in the other work, okay? I know you have impeccable standards, but anyway, folks, let's get right into it. Hey Daryl, so I just used a small intro, not the full jingle this time. I hope you understand. If you want me to remove it, I suppose I can still take it out. Anyway, to the rest of you, thanks everyone for tuning in. For today's topic of conversation, I wanted to channel the wonderful Daryl Wildberg and develop one of the themes he's filmed in the past. His logic was so salient in this work that I thought I'd play it safe by more or less just copying him. I hope that's okay, Daryl. Do you hear that? He's right behind me, isn't he? That's not creepy at all. Anyway, his video I'm speaking of was entitled Mildness, How Does It Benefit Us? So here goes. Hello, my name is Daryl Wildberg, Derek London. This video is not sanctioned by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. And it's not sanctioned by the eight faithful, dear, loving, hardworking, diligent, sweet, voluptuous brothers of the governing body located there in Warwick, New York. Sorry, sorry. I get carried away when I talk about them. And it's not endorsed by... Oh, crap. I don't have the pen. Anyway, it's not supported by www.jw.org, the best website on the whole godforsaken internet. They got indoctrination for your workmates, schoolmates, your kids and propaganda for the whole dang family. And this video is not approved by any local body of elders. To be perfectly honest, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not even sure that I approve of this video. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in Jehovah with all your heart, and do not lean upon your own understanding. So how could I in good conscience authorize my own videos? Now in the spirit of our theme today, mildness, I'm going to start at about a 7. But then I'm going to go to about a 15 real quick. Jesus said, call no man your leader. Well, if you can't call them your leaders, they're not your leaders. I don't work for any man. I don't answer to any man. I answer directly to Jesus Christ, our foreman, who works for my heavenly father, Jehovah God. I wish you a prostate would understand that. 
<laughs> I like to call them the prostates because, you know, it's like a prostate, but pro anyway, it was funnier when Daryl said it. <sighs> but I don't work for any man. I wish you apostate morons would let that sink into that thick, dumb, ow, thick, dumb skull of yours. For that matter, I wish many Jehovah's Witnesses would understand that. The governing body are not our leaders. Get over it. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, oh yeah, today I want to talk to you about mildness and how it benefits us. Now, many of you idiot, moron, stupid, twit, twerp, tomfool apostates are going to claim, well, I've seen your videos. You're not very mild. No, no, I'm not. Not in my videos. Why am I not mild in my videos? Because I'm a bloody hypocrite. Oh, no, damn it. Sorry. Why am I not mild in my videos? I thought I had an answer for that. Oh, yeah, right, of course. <laughs> that was close. It's because my videos are directed to those who already know the truth. You see, you can't question the teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses because they have the truth. I mean, they even call it the truth. So how can you question it when truth is right there in the title? Now, I've disagreed with the doctrines from time to time. Well, they've gotten things false on occasion, such as that minor 1914 issue. I've spoken out against it with that Smurf idiot. <laughs> Boy, did I punk her out on that one. She called me thinking she could get me to contradict myself and flip on our dear leaders. I mean, er, uh, uh, dear brothers taking the lead. They're still not our leaders, remember. Nice try, Smurf. <laughs> She's a dipstick. So yeah, I disagree with certain things. But just because something that is called the truth turns out to actually quite frequently be false, that in no way diminishes the truth value of the truth because those teachings are called the truth. So it's impossible for it to be false, even though it is often false, and I'm willing to agree that there are falsehoods in the teachings. You see, let's run through a little thought experiment here. Let's take the following statement. This sentence is false. Now we know that statement is true. How? Because it's telling us that it is false. So therefore, it's making an accurate report on itself. So just because the statement is saying it's false, doesn't mean that it's false. Because it's true that the statement is false, therefore the statement is correct. So apply that to the teachings of the Watchtower. Just because they're often palpably false, they're called the truth. So could it then be false? And these apostates know this in their heart of hearts. It's inexcusable. When people leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, God likens it to a dog returning to his vomit. So no, I'm not mild with them. It's like a child who's been instructed in a certain path who discovers that path was incorrect. If any of you have children who expose your mistakes and hypocrisy, do you handle them mildly? Do you apologize and try to be a better, more consistent parent? Never. Possible appropriate discipline may include berating them, yelling at them, holding their hands on a hot stove, or, or even mandating the rest of their family not to talk to them. Mildness is no longer warranted, you see. Discipline is what's necessary. So yes, I call people names. I call them dipsticks, twerps, twits, idiots, morons. But these are directed to the apostates, the disfellowshipped, and the inactive, and as well as the disassociated. These names are directed to them, and it's the same name as Jehovah God calls them. Now turn with me to Jeremiah 4.22. Now I'm reading from the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, the best translation of the Bible ever. But you can follow along in your own Bible. It basically says the same thing. Well, I mean, except for those few cases where it's been interpreted to suit JW doctrine, but besides that, Jeremiah 4.22, and God is speaking to the apostate nation of Israel. He says, For my people are foolish. They take no note of me. They are stupid sons with no understanding. So please, if you'll take some time out here and look up in a thesaurus the word stupid, which God calls them, or foolish, and you'll see all the names I call these apostates. These disfellowshipped, these disassociated, and the inactive. I call them the same name that Jehovah God does. 
Actually, just look up that word foolish in a thesaurus. You'll learn that the word ludicrous is synonymous with foolish. And, as you are no doubt aware, ludicrous is a celebrity famous for producing rap music. Well, you know how God feels about rap, don't you? So do you think Jehovah God is fond of the apostates with their devil rap music? Now take another word synonymous with foolish. Half-baked. Someone who's half-baked is a person who just smoked half a joint of marijuana. So apostates are drug abusers too. Now look up the word drug addict, and you'll notice the word junkie. And if you take that root word junk, you'll notice in Urban Dictionary that it's synonymous with genitalia. So everyone who has left the truth are drug-addicted nutsacks who worship their daddy Satan through their evil rap music. You see, I haven't called them anything my loving father, Jehovah God, hasn't called them. Is mildness an appropriate response to such ones? No. So in that instance, I'm not mild to the ones who have rejected Jehovah after knowing him. I'm not mild with them. I'm harsh with them. Just like a father who disciplines a child that questions his authority. Might is right. Never forget that. Now I want to share with you the experience of Sarah who doesn't have a last name because she's in a Watchtower article I'm reading. Let's just call her, uh, I don't know, Sarah Morris, so you prostates don't jump all over me for being biased. I'm a timid person by nature, and I don't have a lot of self-confidence. So I feel uncomfortable when I'm with people who have a strong, aggressive personality. But I feel relaxed when I'm with Daryl Wildberg, or uh, when I'm with someone who is mild and humble. I can open up to them. End quote. Now, I'd be Sarah's friend, because again, she's not a wicked, demonized, idiot, twerp, slut, a prostate. We agree with one another. And that's what Jesus taught, remember? He said, pray for your friends, screw your enemies. We're only supposed to be mild with those who agree with us, not like those lying, demonized, slutty, harlot, a prostates. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Sometimes you'll notice I call apostates sluts, trollops, strumpets, whores. And there are perfectly sound reasons for that too. In Revelations, God refers to Babylon the Great as the harlot who rides the wild beast. And as we know, anyone who has an opinion at variance with the Jehovah's Witnesses, the truth, is by definition a false religion. So if you leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, even due to doubts that may have already existed prior to your exit, you are in actual fact prostituting yourself with a false religion. Please look prostitute and harlot up in your thesaurus. You'll notice all those synonyms I've used are right there. But if you're so much of an idiot to understand that, what, uh, well, you're just an idiot. Where was I? Oh, right, we're still talking about mildness. I'm not a mild person by nature. But the truth of God's living word has completely transformed my life, unlike those bastard, stupid, moron, idiot, hussy apostates. I still slip up here and there, too. I'm imperfect. This watchtower I'm reading says that mildness even diffuses tension in marriage. I've said a lot of hurtful things to my wife that I didn't mean. But rash words spoken in anger cannot be withdrawn. Here's a little example for you. Just the other day, I was sitting down eating breakfast with my wife. What I intended to say to her was, Pookie dearest, love of my life, Will you please pass the salt for my eggs? But suddenly, right out of nowhere, I exploded on her saying, You bitch! You utterly ruined my life! Oh, I felt so bad. I tried to take it back, but it was too late. The moment had passed and I couldn't correct it. Yeah, I've done stuff like that. I felt so bad when I saw how much I had hurt her. Now, we all stumble many times in our speech. I've been a victim of this myself by that smurf idiot. I guess she called a brother in my former congregation who said I was crazy and mentally unwell. Dick! Oh, sorry, those are involuntary. Uh, Tourette's, sorry. That wasn't very mild of him. Asshole! <clears throat> and here's something interesting for you. That elder is a special pioneer. He draws a salary from the organization. If I so wanted, did you realize that I could sue the society for libel and defamation due to his slanderous gossip? I know this because I have a state-of-the-art attorney who defended me in court three times in a row. I've been to prison all three times. 
He's made just about every mistake in the book, so he really knows his stuff by now. So if I weren't such a mild person, I mean, the watchtower would really have their hands full with me. I could seriously cost them a lot of money. But I don't do that. Brothers make mistakes. That's just the human element. So I love that elder who called me a nut job. Dick, dick. Even the Bethel over there is made up of imperfect men. I have letters from the branch that would make the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. But they're imperfect. That's just the human element. So to sum up, be mild with those who agree with you. Unless, of course, they're your wife or some idiot elder. Or be mild with the governing body and branch members who are also infallible because they have the truth. You know, just because someone is imperfect doesn't mean they're fallible. And always exercise mildness to those who've left the organization, unless they've committed blasphemy by leaving the organization. In which case, it's open season, but, you know, other than that, be mild, or don't. It's up to you. I want to thank you for watching this video. And as always, have a nice day. All right, I'm back, guys. Home sweet home. I wanted to say a special thanks to Daryl for the opportunity, and, and especially his hospitality. I mean, he was just awesome to me. I really enjoyed making this video. And uh, Mr. Wilberg, I know we've got a lot of differences and friction in our relationship, but I'm crossing my fingers to work with you in the future, you know? Put a lot of effort into modeling my reasoning after yours in this video, and that's quite a challenge. So take it easy on me, all right? I totally understand why you don't want to come over here on my channel, where I have all the autonomy. And besides, you really can't trust them ex-witnesses with all their photoshopping and green screen work. Like, they are really a duplicitous bunch. But thanks a lot for paying my airfare out there to your home and letting me shoot this right in your own living room. I and mean, that was awesome. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. I think you're really going to love my work on this. And here's to a long, happy YouTube partnership together. <laughs> you and me, Daryl, we're going to be together for a long time. And as for the rest of you idiot, moron, tomfool, apostate sluts, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey guys, did you like this video? You know what to do. And if something I mentioned today resonated with you, click one of them cards on this screen. I have lots of related content sure to interest you. Thanks as always for your views, and we'll see you next time.